of John chapter 20. The book of John chapter 20. Join me there if you would please. John chapter 20. I want you to look at a situation here. Uh, let's, let's, set the, let's set the situation up. Uh, it is Sunday. It's Sunday and Jesus has just risen from the tomb. You know what's happened there. Remember when Jesus... He was crucified, he was buried, uh, and now he has risen. It's Sunday morning, and the tomb is open. And you remember the ladies, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary, the mother of James, and Mary Magdalene, uh, and Joanna, and other ladies uh, all, were all going to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus Christ. That was common back in those days. They put the spices upon the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where they were headed to do that. But when they got there, he was not there. He was gone. And then you remember he appeared unto Mary Magdalene and uh, he talked to her and he let her know that he was alive. And so all of this is taking place. And then, of course, the apostles come. You remember John and Peter run to the tomb, and they race there to see uh, for themselves that Jesus is not there. And so all of these things happen, and what one of the things that, that all of a sudden hit the apostles was that they were going to be blamed for stealing the body of Jesus. but So they, they become fearful. The apostles got scared. And they all went. They all went. And, and But what happens is Jesus comes and leads them, leads them up. But they don't know this, you see. They, they, are, they leave the tomb and they go to the room Jesus is amongst them, but they don't see him. And they all go into a room and close the door. They go back to, into the community, to a room. They go up in there. They close the door, and they start meeting. They start this meeting of talking about, well, we're going to be blamed for the robbery, for taking the body of Christ. They're fearful. They're afraid. But something happened. All of a sudden, Jesus comes to them to set everything. Let's, let's look at this situation. Uh, in John chapter 20, we'll go all the way to verse 19. And that's where we'll pick this up. Then the same day, that Sunday, the Sunday that he has resurrected from the tomb, then the same day, at evening, being the first day of the week, of course, that's Sunday, when the doors were shut, that's the room that they went into, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. They were fearful because they knew that the Jews were going to blame them for rolling that stone away and stealing the body of Jesus to try to convince everybody that he did resurrect from the dead. Amen. They were fearful. It says next, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Amen. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins, ye remit, or that means forgive. They are 
remitted. That means they've been forgiven unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, that means people that refuse to believe, that they are retained. That is, they didn't get saved. So he's, he's giving them, he gives to them here a picture of what their, what their calling is going to be. They're going to have to go out and take the word of Jesus Christ to the people. It's now their turn. Jesus had done it. Jesus had preached the gospel all over Jerusalem, all over Israel, all the way up into into the foreign countries north of Israel, going up. He has traveled down the coast along the Mediterranean Sea, preaching the gospel. Right. He has gone south of Jerusalem and preached the gospel. He has spread for three years, three years he has spread the gospel of who he is and how a person is to be saved, Amen. to believe. Right. in the Lord Jesus Christ. To accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, your only Savior, the only way that you can get into heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, uh, he said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. He said, now, I'm, my, my gospel is finished. My God, I have been crucified. I have died. I have now risen. It's me. Look at my hands. Look at my side. But I'm not staying here anymore. Amen. I'm leaving. I'm heading back to heaven. He said, now it's you that have got to go for it. That's right. It's you that have got to start spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, now I'm sending you out to start telling the world, everybody, preach to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, he said, it's it's time for you to take over. And so, so we have here that Jesus had entered into that room and given them the directions of what they had to do. Amen. Jesus came to them. He rose. He was alive, but yet in a different body. They went into that room and they closed the door. Most likely they locked it. The windows were closed. They were afraid. They were in there. And then all of a sudden, appearing in the midst of them, comes Jesus. Amen. And they see him. Can you imagine that he, he was in a body. He was in a body that was able to, to transform himself into a spirit in which he could come through walls, but yet they were able to touch him. They were able to feel him. They were able to look at his hands. He still had this, the, the holes in his hands. That's right. He still had that hole in his side, but yet he walked, he talked, he had all the feelings of a human body, but yet he was not tied down to gravity. He was not tied down to brick and mortar. He could pass through walls. He could pass through the ceiling. He could do anything in a spiritual body. That's the body that you're going to have one. Day. Amen. That's the body that all that that we all will have. Those that are born again through the the blood of Jesus Christ, a glorified body. Amen. The only difference between our body and His body was he retained, he retained the scars. And there up in heaven, the only thing made by man, they say, are the holes in his hands. Amen. And that big slice in his side. He will, he's, he retained the wounds that man gave him. That's there he is. And here he stood right in front of all the apostles. He let them know that he, he was alive and they could handle him. Can you imagine they were fearful because he was dead? And now, now they're looking at him 
and they're touching him and they're handling him. Can you imagine the gladness, the happiness in their hearts? Amen. As they, at one moment, were fearful of his death, and yet now he's alive. Amen. I want to, I want to look at something that happened. <coughs> something that happened when he walked into that room. I titled the message today, When Jesus Enters the Room. When Jesus enters the room, what happened when Jesus entered into that room where those, those apostles were gathered? That was, it was only apostles. It was only the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. It was only those that loved him, that had followed him. There were no other people in that room, just the apostles. And there in that room, filled with believers filled with people that love the Lord Jesus Christ, there he comes in, somehow enters into that room. We don't, we can't fathom the power of that glorified body that he was in, that you could touch, you could feel, you could even put your fingers in the hole because he, he showed that, if you remember, uh, to one of his apostles that doubted him. An old doubting Thomas, they called him, did not believe at first that it was. And he said, here, put your fingers in there. That's right. And look at it, that you can feel it. That was, that was me up there on the cross. Amen. And he believed with all, without a doubt. You see, you can feel him, but yet there's something about that body that's not like ours at all. Amen. And, and so he enters into the room. What happens when Jesus enters into our room? What happens when Jesus is right here in the church? What happens when Jesus enters into your room? Amen. When you need him. That's right. When you're going through something. Some of you do go through some things. Some of you are going through some things right now. Some of you are facing some difficulties and hardships. Some of you are going to be facing some things down the road that you have no clue about. But yet, he knows. He knows what you're going through. He knows how you're feeling. He can read your heart like a book. He knows your mind, whether it's on the things of God or whether it's on the things of the world. He knows your heart, whether it's right with God or whether it's right with the devil out there. He knows everything about you. He knows whether you're real or you're a fake. He knows all of these things. And what happens when he enters into your room? I want to share with you some things that he says right here. And when he talks about, when he talks about entering into a room. One of the first things that I noticed was in verse 19 where we started out. In verse 19 it said, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, that's Sunday, when the doors were shut, they were afraid, weren't they? Where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace, be still. You know, when I read that right there, they were frightened, they were fearful, Yet Jesus came into that room and he spoke those words, peace be still. I, I, if I could share something with you, some of the things that really jumps out to me right there is that when Jesus enters into the room, he will change your fear to peace. He will change your fear to peace. Whatever it is that you will be fearful of, you may not even know the fear that's coming to you one day. There's been people that have faced fear of, of one thing after the other. People that have faced fear of death. People that, that have faced fear of sickness. People that have faced fear of things in their families. People that have faced fear of what might happen next. Of, of this person, that person, of a child, of a grandchild. People have fears of things. People have fears of their finances. People have fears of the difficulties that they're facing right now or fears of the things that they are going to face. We all face fears. But when Jesus 
Jesus comes into the room, he can change your fear to peace. He said right here, peace be unto you. They were afraid, but yet all of a sudden, Jesus entered into that room and he brought peace to those people right there. Boy, can you imagine the, the difficulty that they were facing, the hardships that they were facing. But being afraid, these people were afraid of what might happen to them. They were there and not knowing what was coming. Their leader was gone. Uh, they, they didn't know what they were going to do, where they were going to go. They had people that wanted to kill them. There were, there were Jews out there that hated them because of their relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you, if you think that everything is smooth, we're just one pin stroke away of the laws being changed in a lot of ways. Amen. And we have no idea what might come our way. But I can tell you this, I do know the future. I've read the book. Amen. It's in the book of Revelation. That's right. And there is a leader coming one day that's going to take over this world. And, and, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. But the good news is for all of us is that, that we are the children of God and he brings peace to us Amen. when we're facing the most difficult times. That's right. Whatever comes our way, Whatever you face today, tomorrow, next week, whatever you go through, he can change all of your fear to peace. Amen. He can bring it because he's the one that controls everything in this universe. When things are going wrong, I turn to him. When things are difficult, I turn to him. I trust him. I put everything on his plate, not on mine. I have to turn to him and say, Lord, Lord, I can't handle this. I'm not prepared for this. I'm not the, the power that I need to be, but you are. Right. He's the great physician when I'm sick or my children are sick. He's the protector when somebody is in trouble. Right. I have to pray to him on a regular basis for his power not to take care of me. I do. I, I'm ready to accept whatever he brings my way. But I've got family members that are not so ready. That's right. And I'm praying for them each and every day. Amen. I'm praying for somebody down the street. I'm praying for somebody around me. I'm praying for somebody in the church. I'm praying for all the things. Lord, I need, I need your working upon them. That's right. Lord, put your hand upon them. Lord, protect them. Lord, lift them up. Give them the strength. Some that 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 need you more than anything else. Lord, I'm praying for them. Amen. He brings peace into the person's life. When you turn and give everything to the Lord Jesus Christ, he will bring peace to you. It is, it is the Lord. He changed the fear, changed the fear of this world. Change the fear of those that hated. Change the fear that those were trying to destroy them. He changed that fear and gave them peace in their heart. He'll give you peace when you need it. Amen. And you can sit there and say, well, I'm, I'm fine. Well, let me help you with something. You best not say that out loud. You best not say it. It's, it's just like, just like Ivan was talking about the, the, one, the lady in Sunday school, Lord, uh, help me to serve you. Whatever you got to do in my life to make me serve you, do it, Lord. To get me to, to be in, in your life, do it, Lord. And he did. The next day, she, drew, she dove into the swimming pool, hit her head on the bottom, broke her neck. And she was paralyzed for the rest of her life. But you know where she is? She's in church. That's right. Be careful by saying, well, I'm all right. I don't need any. Everything's fine with me. Well, let me tell you something. It's only by the grace of God. That's right. It's only by the peace 
It's only by the peace that God gives us that allows us to serve him. Best serve him with all of your heart Amen. without him having to get you uh, in, in a position where you will serve him. That's right. It, it's, it, Jesus entered into the room and he changed their fear to peace. That's right. Amen. That's what he does. Something else that I want to share with you is in verse 20. In verse 20, it says, And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Notice that. They were glad. When Jesus enters into the room, he changes their fear to joy. He changes your fear to joy. But no matter what you're going through, if you've got if you've got the Lord Jesus Christ living inside of you, He brings joy into whatever you face, into whatever you're going through. He can bring that gladness. He can bring that happiness into. Well, I tell you what, one of the great things that I can rejoice over, to, no matter what I go through, no matter what I face, one of the great things that I can go through. And I can look at, and I know, is that I'm born again. I am on my way to heaven. I have been. I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ many years ago. I was still in the military. I came home one day, and I knew I was on my way to hell, the way I had lived, the things I had done. And I got home. I still had my uniform on. I still had my combat boots on. And Sue and the girls had left. They were gone. And I sat there in the bottom of my life, right there in the living room. And I fell down on my knees in that living room. And I put my head down in that shag carpet, tells you how long it was. <laughs> and I got down and I begged, I begged the Lord to forgive me. Amen. I gave my life to the Lord Jesus. I asked Jesus to come into my heart. I, I tell you right now, boy, that brought more joy into my life than I'd ever had. That I knew that whatever happened to me, if I died somewhere, if a plane went down and I was in that plane, if a helicopter went down and I was in that helicopter, wherever I was, no matter what happened to me, I knew I was going to heaven. Amen. Well, that brought joy into my heart. There was a lot of sadness all around me, but in me was a lot of joy. I had happiness because I knew the Lord Jesus Christ. Did I live for Jesus? Well, I hate to tell you, but I didn't. After I got saved, I, I was at, at, out in a site one day where uh, during the, it was during the first Gulf War, and we had a lot of guys out there that were, that were working satellite communications back to Fort Stewart. Running telephone signals so that the soldiers in in Iraq could talk to to Mama back home and let her know that she was all right. But then one commander called me in and said, "Why isn't that satellite working?" I was just sitting in there drinking coffee, just relaxing. I don't know. He said, "Wrong answer." So <laughs> you better go find out. Went out there and all. The, my guys were just sitting around drinking coffee too. Nothing was working. I got mad. I was just saved. I just told them about Jesus yesterday. Amen. I got mad. What came out of my mouth, I'm ashamed. I kicked the trash can that was sitting out there with those steel-toed boots and sent that thing about 20 yards. Could have kicked a field goal with that trash Amen. can. What I said, and time I said it, and time I showed out, and time I did it, I felt the presence of God speaking to me, Amen. saying, great witness, son, tell him about Jesus one more time. Great. And I thought, oh my, I just lost my testimony right there. God spoke to my heart. There wasn't no voice that I heard. It just knew it in here. Amen. Go apologize to each one 
individual and tell them how sorry you are for what you did, that that wasn't what you were supposed to do. And I did. Amen. I tried to explain to God that people with all my many strikes, they don't apologize to anybody. And God said, you haven't seen the four stars that I got. Amen. You best go apologize. And I did. Individually, one by one. But you know what? When I got through, I went back. And I, had, I was filled with joy. Amen. I got down on my knees and I prayed. And I asked God to forgive me. And when I got up, I was filled with joy. He turns fear into gladness. Amen. He turns the fear of what you're going through into happiness. He turns everything that you're so scared of and what you're going to fear today or fear tomorrow, he will turn it into joy. Amen. Not because of something that you did, but because of who you are. Amen. You're his child. That's right. You were born again. When Jesus enters into the room, first of all, he brings peace. And when he enters into that same room, he will bring joy. And third, in verse 21, it says, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. We've already talked about that. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. That's right. Jesus entered into the room to change their fears to soul winning. He made soul winners out of them. He said, you're going to go out and you're going to go out and, and witness to people out there. You're going to go. You remember when Jesus said, when he said, go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. He said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Don't you know that these old fishermen, these old boys, these Galilean speaking boys, fishermen, tax collector, they probably looked at God and said, how am I going to teach all nations? I just speak Galilean. And he said, oh, you're going to be able to speak any language on earth. Amen. You can walk into a foreign country and you just speak Galilean and they'll hear you in their own That's tongue. Right. That's right. Read Acts chapter 2. Amen. Peter got up to preach and people from all over the world were in Jerusalem and Peter preached the Bible says in his Galilean tongue and everybody in the street heard the gospel of Jesus Christ in their own language Amen. tongues were created that day tongues was was simply where an individual an apostle could go into any country and speak in his Galilean tongue, and the person he talked to heard it in their tongue. Amen. And when they talked back to the apostle in their tongue, he heard it in Galilean. Amen. The Holy Spirit That's was right. transferring the tongue. He was the translator. He took it out of that tongue and put it into that ear. And he took it off of that tongue and put it into this ear. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Well, how am I going to do that? You've got the power. Amen. Right. You've got the Holy Spirit now. You see, they were able to go out and do. They were soul winners. They could talk to anybody. You know what that God, what one of the things that I find in, in churches today, in people that sit in church and have sat in church all their life, and you say, hey, have you ever talked to your neighbor about the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, I, I'm not very good at talking to people. Why? Did, did God make a mistake? Did, did God, when he said, go ye therefore and teach all nations, that, 
That meant everybody else but you. Oh, come on. Now, you know what? You know what gives you the power to overcome fear? The Holy Spirit. Amen. All you got to do is say, "I need that power, Lord." Amen. I need that power. Well, I was scared to death to knock on a door. I didn't want to go out and witness to anybody. What if they asked me a question? And my preacher gave me the greatest advice in the world. If they ask you a question and you don't know, you know what you tell them? I don't know. <laughs> I ain't got the slightest idea. But what I do know is that I prayed one day and Jesus came Amen. into my heart. And I'm saved. Now, I don't know nothing about that over there, and I don't know nothing about that over there. I haven't learned it all, but I do know this. I got saved. Amen. I'm going to heaven. How about you? You see, that's what it, that's You have to overcome fear. The, the biggest fear I ever had in my life was witnessing to my daddy. I watched him die in a hospital room. The doctors had called me and said, if you want to see him, you better hurry. When I got there, my daddy was crying, and he said, son, I need you to pray for me. And I said, daddy, I've been praying for you for years. He had 7% of his liver left. He was dying. He laid there in that bed, tears coming down his eyes. He said, pray for me. I said, daddy, I prayed for you, but that ain't going to help you. This is one time you need to pray for yourself. Amen. And then he said the saddest thing I ever heard out of his mouth. He said, son, I don't know how. Now here I am, an assistant pastor, and my daddy didn't even know how to pray. I was afraid to even talk to him. But then it was as God said, you're going to let him die and go to hell? And I sat there in that in that room in the hospital, and I took his hand. I said, Daddy, you need to be saved. He said, I got baptized when I was a baby. I said, no, 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 no. Yeah, I did too. 1949. Don't remember it, but I got the certificate. That ain't going to get you to heaven, Daddy. That's right. The Bible says you need to repent of your sins. And ask Christ to be your Savior. He said, I don't know how, I don't know what to say. And I led my daddy in a prayer. And I can tell you this if there was one man that meant every word he said, it was him. Amen. He squeezed my hand. I thought that old man was going to break my fingers. But he prayed. Christ. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my life. And he asked Christ to be his Savior that day. The next day when I went to see him, he didn't know me. He screamed at me, cussed at me, because I did not pull the lever. They don't know what you're talking about. And through the whole conversation that hour, I found out that he was mad at me because I didn't pull the lever in the B-17 in time to drop the bombs. He knew every part of that plane that he flew in in World War II, but he didn't know me. That night he died. But I can tell you this. He died with peace in his heart. Amen. He died... And I never saw joy like I saw in the face of that old man when he prayed and asked Christ to be his Savior. He died with peace. He died with joy. He wasn't a soul winner, but that day I became a soul Amen. winner. That day when I left that hospital, I wasn't afraid to talk to anybody. That day when I left the hospital, I knew where I was going, and I wanted to make sure anybody else out there that wanted to know, I was going to tell them. Amen. And I started that day learning my Bible. And that night, I started studying. And I got book after book after book. And year after year after year, I learned passages.
passage after passage after passage. I had I had scriptures on index cards pasted to the dashboard of my old pickup truck. And I'd ride down the road and I'd memorize scripture. You gotta become a soul winner. You gotta overcome your fear. And be willing to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. You don't have to tell everybody, but there's somebody, somebody you know that needs Jesus. And the problem is, we'll just sit there and let them go. We can't do that. Jesus enters into the room, and he'll change your fears to soul winning. What's it going to take to get you to, to tell people? One last thing, and then I'm through. I'll make this a quick one because I've kind of rambled. But then I'm the pastor. That's right. yes. Verse 22 says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them. Uh-oh. Boy, I tell you what, this one really gets people going. He breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now, why did Jesus do that? Why, why do you think that Jesus had to breathe on them to give them the Holy Ghost? What, understand this, folks. Don't take this and try to bring it into the church age. This is not the church. We're still in the Old Testament times. The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are still in the Old Testament times. The church doesn't happen until Acts chapter 2. That's right. When, when the, the, these same apostles leave here, follow me now, they leave here, they walk down the road, they go up into an upper room, Jesus tells them goodbye, he goes up back to heaven, shoots back up to heaven, they wave goodbye to him, they go into an upper room, and Peter starts preaching. And all those people in the streets, lots of them, because it's Pentecost. That's right. It's the 50th day. It's the day in which everybody goes home from the Passover. They're all in the street. They're Jews from every nation under earth. And Jesus, remember what Jesus said, I'm going back to heaven, but what I'm going to do is send you back the Comforter. Amen. That's the Holy Spirit. So he sent back the Holy Spirit to them. And the Holy Spirit came to them and they were able to start preaching and he turned their language into the ears of the people in the street right. and they got saved. Yeah. In fact, the Bible says 3,000 people got saved, but they could not even understand Peter. It was the Holy Spirit that turned it into yeah. their language right. and they heard it, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It was called tongues. Right. And right here, Jesus breathed on them to receive the Holy Ghost. Why do you have to do that? Because the Holy Ghost in the Old Testament did not live here. The Holy Ghost lived in heaven during the Old Testament. He only came down when God breathed him down onto people. Jeremiah got breathed. Isaiah got breathed. All the writers of the Old Testament got breathed on and they wrote all those books. It was God's breath coming down through the Holy Ghost. And right here, what he does is he breathes on these apostles. The Holy Ghost. And you know where the Holy Ghost went? Time they get, it filled them with power, the Holy Ghost went right back to heaven. Amen. Didn't give them anything other than the power to do what he wanted them to do. Don't take something in the Old Testament and try to bring it over into the New Testament. The church hasn't started yet. The church will start a few pages over in Acts chapter 2. Amen. Then, what happens to the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit comes down at the church age, Acts chapter 2. And anybody that accepts Jesus Christ, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's right. Holy Spirit doesn't have to be breathed on you. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you if you're saved. The Holy Spirit has, has, has come down and has anointed you, given you power and strength to do whatever you have to do. When I witnessed to my daddy, it was the Holy Spirit That's that right. gave me the power to do that. That Holy Spirit lived in 
inside of me. That Holy Spirit gave me the power. Nobody had to breathe him onto me. I got him when I got saved. That's right. You got him when you got saved. Amen. What does all that mean? It means Jesus enters the room to change your fear into receiving the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. It comes to you when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ. It comes to you when you kneel down and ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior. You've got 100% of the Holy Spirit if you're saved. Nobody has to breathe down on you. Nobody's got to hit you in the head. You don't have to fall down and roll around and put on any kind of show. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, He fills you with the Holy Spirit, and he lives inside of you. In the Old Testament, right here, he had to be breathed on people, and then he would leave and go back to heaven. In the New Testament, starting in Acts chapter 2 and onward to the end, he comes to us when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and stays with us. Well, I'm glad that my fear has been changed to receiving the Holy Spirit. So you see, when, when, you, when you let Jesus into your room, you'll receive peace, you'll receive joy, you'll receive the ability to soul win, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. You get it all through the power of God. Let's have us a word of prayer as we get ready to head out.